<laughs> if you fucking die. Oh, yeah, let's try it, guys. <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> and then it's like, what else? Yeah, this is the right call. Yeah, I have no. I'm sorry, Conrad. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Malik is the man. You got this far. Yeah, woo. Gloves in there. You got tunes, got ropes, ascenders. I never thought I would have a reason to come to Montana. You know, I'm a city kid, but like, I never was scared to venture off into the woods by myself or like, you know, go explore. It was like the mountains was a pool. I'm like putting my toes in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, how deep is it? Yeah. I mean, the first time I met Conrad, like, I wasn't trying to fanboy him or whatever. I had just started climbing. I was still scared of heights, and he never made me feel bad about not being a confident climber. Here we get to go in front. We get to where we are in life through people. Our chance meetings with people can really help steer your life and what is important in your existence. I never in a million years imagined that I would ever climb with Conrad, you know? When he brings people in, he's always trying to bring people to become the best of who they can be. Yeah, there's that pillar. Yeah, you know, just, it's this flow. I can tell within 15 minutes of meeting someone if I'm gonna be friends with that person going onwards. <laughs> when we met, there was an instant connection. Ice climbers already enough absurd. <laughs> Use rock and nice tools and count me out. It's the quality of the spirit that your heart creates while you're doing it. Is that's, to me, a success. Malik and I have been friends now for going on three years. Even though Malik didn't come from an outdoor background and climbing was new to him, somehow the path led him to climbing. It's steep, but it looks like it should be not that bad. Nice reach, That's a good one. Climbing is the manner in which we communicate. Get your feet up, go one, two, three. One, two, three. Usually in life, I tell everybody I do what I want. Yeah, there you go. We have commonalities that are uh, atypical. There you go, nice Malik. Like, Conrad lost all his homies in the mountains, and I've lost all my homies in the hood. This was the gas station I was at. Uh, first time I seen someone get shot, it was like over here on these pumps. Cause we was over there in Bellevue Park. <laughs> we was walking home. And I just came over here to get a soda. And as I was just coming back across the lot, I heard somebody arguing or saying something and then I heard the shots. And I turned around and seen the dude on the ground. And you know, just be like, oh shit, you finished walking home. And then that just be it, you know? Um, I was 16, I was 16. I'm at my house. I live downtown, uh, so I'm like 20 minutes away, 15, 20 minutes away. Can we reschedule? Oh, right now, I'm, I'm just sick, man. Yeah. Okay. Hey, mom, let me give you a call, though. Nah, no problem. I love you, Dad. All right, bye bye. Jonathan just seems like. Not me. Malik seems more like my personality or like pro-blackness. 
I'm more than myself than anything because like I never wanted to be like him. The family dynamic is just weird to me, you know what I mean? We ain't got no relationship, you know what I'm saying? My mom and dad were on drugs when I was a kid. To my knowledge, like, she was high when she gave birth to me. She never was around as a child. To learn how to press on and go, like, I had to, like, not care about them. And I'm just not willing to, like, put myself in a position where I have to. My grandma adopted me when I was two years old. She moved me to Utah. She did that to give me a chance. Come out here from time to time, not often, but just whenever I feel like it. She took me in when she didn't have to. I took care of her the last couple years of her life, and I was with her when she passed. Uh, it's the family house. My great-grandma bought that house and paid it off and left it to my grandma. I want to buy this lot, though. Or at least just buy it and pitch a tent. Like, I want to just be able to get up and go. I don't ever want to be, like, really attached to a place outside of, like, Memphis is my home. But... My plan A was plan B. Like, I never had no other choice. I have to keep going for myself because it's just, like, that's all I got. It's just like, you know, if you want it, you want to make it happen. August 2018, there is a uh, global climbing day. Anyone can come climbing, have a good time. So I landed in Memphis, and Memphis Rocks was about four or five months old at the time. Malik was in there taking photographs. I just knew he was just like a super famous climbing dude. I introduced myself. He seen like my curiosity, and he responded to it. I taught him how to use his senders, and it was like, I'm putting everything else down. We're going to focus on this, and we're going to perfect the technique to get you up on the wall to shoot down. You know, he always texts me, hey, check in. You know, we click on a lot of things. You know, I'm laid back. I'm an old soul. But I'm also very serious and stoic. You know what I mean? Like, when it's time to, like, buckle up, comrade serious as hell. We had no 24 hours, it could rain, it could sleet, it could lightning fall. But he still laugh joke. You're going to be hungry. Your feet are going to be tired. <laughs> You're gonna be scared shitless because we're <laughs> exposed. You're gonna be rocks flying everywhere. I ain't never did shit for 24 hours, yeah. bro. Like these okay. motherfuckers be climbing. For That's who he is. And I think when you spend that much time in the mountains and you have that clarity of what's important, what's not important. Conrad has a really pure heart. Mentoring is his legacy. Being a mentor, being a parent, being a part of the community means setting your own priorities, your own goals aside and helping out other people. People did that for me, and now where I am at in my life, I'm reciprocating. When it comes to purposely putting myself in dangerous situations, mountain climbing is something I do. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like what drives me. That ain't something that just makes me feel alive like that. You know what I'm saying? The push to go further is just understanding that it ain't about me, you know what I mean? It's about, like, for other black people. That's why I go out there, because it's just like being a voice in my community. One of these mornings Won't be very long I don't even know. What is the proper definition of hero? You will look for me. Malcolm X, Fred Hampton. I believe that a hero is someone who is important to their community and where they come from. Someone who will lay it on the line. As soon as I get this really big hole, this is my next foothold. All the older figures in my life I looked up to like I killed. I view Conrad as like my mountain dad. For him to be one of the first big names come through Memphis Rocks was, was pretty big for all of us, really. Okay, now you've got the whole route, top to bottom. 
Yeah. But isn't that good climbing? <laughs> Shit. All right, now I got to be as good as I was last time. Instead of like taking advantage of minority people in the industry, Conrad brought me into his circle of influence. He understands how important that is, you know? I'm on one of the tallest peaks in America. Anything can happen. I'm so thankful. I'm... Yeah. The intrinsic reward of helping someone out. What's up? What's up, Yo. what's up? Perhaps in a way I was subconsciously trying to start this virtuous cycle of giving back to people. Being able to give people new experiences in life is paramount to them like growing. People gonna see like I have a lot more stuff to give to the world. To be able to share that with my peers, I should go as hard as I can.